Okay, gang, believe it or not, day two of one-page notes with no prep. Yes! So we're going to take some notes on lesson 5-3, ordering or comparing and ordering integers. Comparing and ordering integers. Oops. Integers. And today's date is 1-9. Oops, almost did it. 19. All right, so first thing I want to do is talk about our numbers, different types of numbers we've talked about so far. Okay, and so I'm going to create a little picture now. For me, I'm going to draw it pretty big. Um, for you, it should take about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven maybe lines, okay, uh, on your paper, and then that'll give us plenty of room to finish up. So we're going to start from the inner innermost type of number and then we're going to branch outwards. So in here are what we call natural numbers. Turn this numbers. Okay, and natural numbers we talked about were things that start with 1, 2, 15 and so on. Okay, actually, you know, let's do that in different colors so they pop out a little bit more. Okay. Now, natural numbers, if you remember the definition from Monday night's notes, natural numbers are part of another circle of numbers called whole numbers. Now, the only thing that's in whole numbers that's not in natural numbers is our friend neutral zero, okay? <clears throat> all whole numbers include all natural numbers, so that's why we're having these circles that nest. So each circle that gets bigger contains all the numbers in the circles inside of it, okay? Then, the guy that we talked about on Monday... interesting circle. Those are your integers. Now, the kinds of numbers that integers contain that we haven't already talked about, we've got whole numbers and their opposites. So the opposites would be things like negative 1, <clears throat> negative 2, negative 15, um, even something like negative 327. So it's any whole number, but the opposite. So it's going to be a negative number. Now, all of these are going to be part of a bigger group of numbers that we have studied. Boom, 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 boom. And this biggest group of numbers is called the rational numbers. So rational numbers contain integers, which contains whole numbers, which contains natural numbers. So what are unique to rational numbers that aren't part of these other groups, integers, whole numbers, or natural numbers? Let's see. That would be our friends fractions and decimals. Now these fractions and decimals can be positive, they can be negative, and there's all sorts of different kinds that we can see. Like here's one a repeating decimal. We're going to be talking about that in a little bit in this chapter. And we have two tenths. So rational numbers contain fractions and decimals, both positive and negative. It includes all the integers, which include all the whole numbers, which include all the natural numbers. Okay. So what are some things we can do when we're comparing? these different values. So this is what's going to be weird. I'm going to give you a mixture of all these, and your job is to figure out how to put them in order from least to greatest. So it's not, it's a little bit like what we did in chapter two, where you had fractions, decimals, and percents, and we needed to put them in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. But when we compare, we're only talking about two numbers. So when we compare, 
we're going to use an inequality symbol. Or it is possible that the two numbers that I give you are exactly the same number, they're just in different parts. So we could use an equal sign. So there's three choices here. Choice one, less than. Choice two, greater than. Choice three, equals, equal sign. Okay? Or I'm going to write, I'm going to change that. I'm going to say equal to. So those are my three options when I'm comparing two different values. Now, sometimes what you might be faced with, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is it may be a little hard to figure out how to put these in order, okay? Because these numbers can be weird. So I'm going to give you a couple suggestions. So you, suggestion one is use a number line. Sometimes it's easier to graph things, and then they're already in order once you graph them. Use a number line to help with ordering the integers. So, again, we're going to start off simply, and we're just going to deal with the integers, comparing and ordering. But in a couple lessons, we're going to then add those additional rational numbers. Okay. Now, the other thing, based on what we talked about yesterday, is what if we get absolute value? So, if I have an absolute value symbol... I have to figure out what its value is before I can put things in order uh, one way or another. So, you must do the absolute value of numbers. inside absolute value symbols and if you remember those just look like parallel lines basically to determine let me do it like that to determine their placement so i cannot place them while they're in absolute value form, I can only place them once I know what their actual values are. But remember, when we put things in order, we are going to go back to the original numbers. Okay? So we're going to do about six examples. Um, we're going to do comparing first, and then we're going to do ordering. Okay? So let me go to the next page. And our directions for the first group are going to say fill in this open circle with greater than, less than, or equal to, <clears throat> to make a true sentence. Now, in order to do this correctly, you can't just write the inequality symbol or the equal sign. You have to write the numbers. You're not going to change the order of the numbers that are given. They're going to stay in the same exact order that they were given to you. And all you're going to do is determine what of these three symbols goes into the circle. So I'm going to see number, the circle with the symbol in it, whether it's an inequality or an equal sign, and then the number. Okay, And it's got to be the same exact order we started with. Now, these, some of these are going to be super, super simple. So we have 12 versus negative 4. Now, I hope we understand 
that when it comes between a positive and a negative, this is slam dunk easy. Obviously, the guy farthest to the right has to be the greater number, and that for sure is going to be the positive. So this one you hardly even need to think about. You immediately are going to say, okay, positive is always greater than a negative. Always, 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 always. Okay? Positive is greater than a negative. Never can be different. Okay? Two. Uh, negative 17 compared to 20. Same thing as number one. Always, 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 always. The positive number is greater. So I have the open of the inequality, remember, always to the larger number. The point of the inequality is always at the smaller number. So like making fun of the little guy. <laughs> neener, 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 you're the small guy. Okay, let's do another one. We have three, and we want to compare it to four. Now, this one's pretty simple. We pretty much have been raised on a number line since we were itty-bitties, so we pretty much know which one's going to be bigger. So this one's also, I would say, pretty much a no-brainer. The larger number, positive number, is got to be the greater of the two. All right, so let's get to the hardest one, the worst case scenario. And that would be, what if I wanted to compare a negative to a negative? So this one, again, most people would say, no sweat, got this down. But sometimes what happens is we get mixed up because we're so used to positive numbers. So my recommendation is, let's go ahead and draw a number line. I'm going to just put a couple numbers on it. Do, 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 do. And we're going to put, let's have negative 7 here. So greater than negative 7 would be negative 6. Less, well, actually, we want, yeah, we'll do that. Negative 8 would be smaller. Negative 9 would be even smaller. So where we're going to take our focus is right here. Now remember, zero is somewhere to the right, and whoever's closest to zero is going to be your largest number. So keeping that in mind, we would have to say that negative 7 is greater than negative 8. Okay? So again, all of these problems are about comparing. Okay, so let's do the second type of problem. And the directions say, order the set of numbers from least to greatest. Now remember, sometimes it'll say greatest to least, so please, 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 pay attention. There's a question on chapter 2 that asked you to go greatest to least, and people wrote the numbers least to greatest. So you got to follow the directions. All right, we're going to do two problems. And the first one, we've got the set that contains negative 9, 6, negative 3, 0. So again, what I would recommend we do is create a number line. So we're going to go negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. Oops, looks like I'm going to have to erase this guy. And continue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let me get those numbers in. Negative 8, negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to color each one differently. There's my negative 9. There's my positive 6. Uh, negative 3 is here. And 0 is here. 
Oops. Doesn't like drawing my circle. So it's pretty easy to see who's the least. That would be negative 9. Least. And who's the greatest? That would be the 6. And then the numbers in order. So we're actually going to put these in order. Red. Green. Orange. So let's put our numbers in, and our solution would be negative 9, negative 3, 0, 6. Now, some of you may argue and say, that's a lot of work, Rosner. A lot. Way too many numbers to draw on a number line. This is not realistic. So what I'm going to do on the next one, show you another way of how you can use a number line to help you. Okay, so let's do our last one, number six. We've got, ooh, look at, oh, that was a terrible brace. Oh, well, we have an absolute value. Absolute value of negative four, three, negative 11, negative 25. So remember what we said. Before we can do anything, we need to find the value, the absolute value of the number inside the absolute value symbols. So the absolute value of 4 is basically saying how far from 0 is negative 4. Well, it's just 4 to the left, so we're going to say its value is 4. Okay, so knowing that, ooh, go back to black, sorry. Knowing that, I'm going to draw my number line, but this time I am not going to freak out about those numbers. What I am going to do is I am going to put 0. Now, just to remind you, this guy is for reference only, because that's going to separate my negatives and my positives. So zero will not be part of my answer, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do is break my numbers into two categories. Let's start with the negatives. So between negative 11 and negative 25, so I'm going to make two tick marks on my number line. Let's see. Negative 11 is closer to 0, so let me go ahead and mark him in, negative 11, and then negative 25 is farther away from 0. Okay, easy peasy. Then we're going to look at the two positive numbers. So let's make two more tick marks. And we have 3 is smaller than 4, so 3 would come first, but it's not really 4. We're going to write the absolute value of negative 4, so it's really important that we remember that its real value isn't 4, it's the absolute value of negative 4. That's what we're going to be doing for our answer. So, in order, we've got negative 25, negative 11, Remember, the zero is not part of the answer because it wasn't part of the problem. We've got three, and we've got the absolute value of negative four. So that's how I'm going to write my answer up. Red, green, orange, yellow, just for the fun of it. Red, green, orange. And yellow. yellow, blue, hello, where's my brain today? All right, so the solution would be negative 25, negative 11, 3, and the absolute value of negative 4. So notice I didn't write every single number between all of these, otherwise it would have been a massively large number line. And I just did the... I, grouped them by negatives and I grouped them by positives and then I was able to get my answer much more easily. All right, have fun with this. See you guys in the morrow.